approved unto God. What higher approval could any of us desire than the approval of the one who is infinitely knowing and wise? Nothing about us escapes his attention, neither our thoughts, nor our attitudes, nor our actions. Therefore, to be divinely approved is a high honor indeed. The commendation of men is often sought after, and this means much to many people. But to the Christian, nothing matters so much as the approval of his Lord. To Timothy, Paul gave some specific counsel, which is worthy of consideration for all who are desirous of divine approval. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now this young minister whom Paul was addressing will live on after his beloved mentor had passed away, and he would bear the responsibility of interpreting the word of God to a host of people who would be searching for truth. To err in interpreting God's word could be disastrous, too much to so to forego diligent study so as to prevent such error. For Timothy to attempt the awesome task of rightly dividing the word of God without adequate preparation would be foolish and something for which he would be accountable to God. And so it continues till this day. Mental laziness cannot be justified for those who carry the obligation of rightly dividing the word of truth. It would be easier to leave this responsibility to someone else, and some seem to prefer it that way. But the call of God makes demands of a person which cannot be shifted to another. To merit God's approval and blessing, a minister must apply his mind to diligent study. The names of Daniel, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will stand out for all time upon the minds of Bible students. But the reason for their being in the right place at the right time may be easily overlooked. You see, a requirement which had been brought into the king's palace in their land of captivity was that they were skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. Daniel 1.4 While yet in their native land of Judah, their diligence had prepared them for this moment they faced in Babylon. By no means were they the only Jews who were carried into Babylonian captivity, but they were in possession of qualities demanded by the king, which thrust them into the limelight. To be skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science would indicate a considerable degree of mental application. Now, obviously, they had spent time in studying. And now their knowledge, which was recognizable, had brought them into the king's palace for a witness that would extend throughout all time. All of us from time to time express a desire to be used of God. While this is a noble desire, there's oftentimes a price we must pay in preparation, which many are unwilling to pay. None of us knows what a day may hold in store for him, but we all do well to heed the apostles' counsel to Timothy. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now many are familiar with the slogan, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. God has given us or given mankind the capacity, which we are told is seldom if we ever develop it to its full potential. In a sense, we may be failing the Lord when we fail to utilize the opportunities we have for filling our minds with useful and profitable knowledge. God does not force his will upon us, but in the exercise of our free wills, he does not approve of apathy or indifference or laziness. Now, studying is a work and it requires disciplining ourselves. And at the same time, learning itself is a real joy. You see, this is especially true of that learning which we receive from the book of books. What I'm talking about is the treasures found and contained in the Holy Bible. Now, even though thousands of students have poured over its pages, something new seems to come to life every day to those who are studying to show themselves approved unto God. This will continue to uh, make a desire in us to get closer to the scriptures. Bible study, my friend, is a course which we do not graduate from. Not only is the life of the digger into the word enriched, 
But those to whom the study and minister imparts the word of God are edified as the result of his digging. Now, it is not hard for a congregation to detect the degree to which the one who fills the pulpit has applied himself in preparation. This is not to suggest a mere intellectual approach to Bible study, no. We're talking about searching the scriptures for spiritual insights. Now this must be pursued through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He alone is the revelator of divine knowledge and a communion with Him must be maintained for productive study. Many demands are made upon the minister's time, many of which are legitimate and necessary. He is a servant of the people, but most important, he is a servant of God, and it is to God that he is accountable. Since this is true, he must establish the priorities for his daily schedule. This apparent independence has been abused by some ministers who were lacking in dedication. His so-called independence is certainly not apart from God's supervision and direction. But thank God for the vast number of dedicated ministers in the Church of God of the Bible. Those ministers who, more than ever, are searching the scriptures, interpreting the word, charting the course for people who are looking to their spiritual leaders for guidance. It is a sobering responsibility which they bear, but God knows what he is doing when he sets a man apart for the ministry of the word of God. These leaders whom God has given us need our prayer, our support, and they deserve our respect. To the church, a Thessalonian, Paul wrote, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. That's found in that first letter in chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. Ministers, members, and all those that desire to study the Word of God, Paul's instructions to Timothy are very timely for us today. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is what it means to be approved unto God. I pray this small message was a blessing to your life.